hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today I have a review of the Tier 6 German battleship, the Bayern. And the reason I'm starting out at Tier 6, I feel it's the first tier where the battleships become distinct from one another. At Tiers 3, 4, and even 5, a lot of the kind of low tier hindrances to things like accuracy and stuff that just don't allow them to perform reliably enough to really be like here's the strengths here's the weaknesses because they all play very similarly the Congo being a bit of a, a unique one in that she has much longer range for her tier compared to say the New York but part of that comes down to her design and it really is the Japanese thing is the sniping long-range engagement so I'm gonna jump right into stats and I'm going to skip uh, or do this first bit without my commander in it and then I'll put them in just to show you how my commander build changes these stats. So right away survivability 51,600 hit points lower than anything else at its tier. If you look at a Fuso 57,100, Warspite 53,800. So that's becoming one of the the German trends up until the higher tiers. They seem to have a lower hit point pool than equal tiered American or Japanese offerings. Her armor is quite reliable in my opinion. 50 to 260 mils on the Citadel. Her forward and after ends just a little thinner at 25 to 200. Her guns 170 to 350 and her deck 25 to 40. Now the guns I feel are very well armored for her tier. I actually haven't lost one. I've had them stunned but that's the worst I've had and I like that. I hate losing guns you know I've talked about it in the North Carolina review like if you lose one of those guns you're dead a little less so in this because your arm armament is a little more spread out but for example the tier 7 nice now you've got two forward turrets and one aft turret you lose one of those you're hurt one thing I will mention though is unless these ships are perfectly square on I really don't feel you should be aiming for the the water line and that main armor belt you just do not reliably get penetrations or citadels. So I would recommend to aim for what I consider the secondary belt. Aim in this area here, up above, you know, and as far up as kind of this number two turret's base. Because if the shells are coming in, you know, they're coming in an angle, they're going to penetrate there because it's much thinner and you're going to get reliable penetrations into the ship. It may not be a citadel and the full damage you would expect out of yourself but you're still gonna out of an entire volley get it you know 10,000 damage because of the number of penetrations so moving on we're gonna discuss what makes this ship truly unique at this tier well I guess in a way and that's her armament she has 380 mil uh, main guns as opposed to the 356 millimeter guns that the Fuso and New Mexico have and the 381 millimeters that make the war spite up until this point quite unique. So at this tier these guns are very large and I know in my war spite video I've shown the absolute damage they can do and I really do enjoy them. And the layout is familiar for me that you know four twin barrel turrets, two forward, two aft. Let's move into her stats. So you can see reload 30 seconds. You're not going to expect the uh, the high reload that you're going to get as you keep these guns moving up into tier 8 where the reload starts to become the benefit rather than the gun size. Turrets are slow at 51.4180, maximum dispersion of 240 meters and that that really does hurt this ship. Uh, for example the New Mexico's maximum dispersion is 196 meters and the Fuso's maximum dispersion yeah, pretty much the same at 241, but the Fuso just has so many more guns that the odds that one of the shells out of that 12 round volley hit the target much higher than this 8 round volley. So I feel that that hurts her a little, but you get really good damage out of these 4500 with HE and a 35% fire chance. So realistically, if you hit with an entire volley of you know 8, you're going to light a fire, but I wouldn't recommend using HE because 
The AP does 10,900, has 17.7 kilometer firing range, and with that high shell velocity, is quite reliable. The other thing that really becomes distinct about the German battleships are the secondaries. So she has six of these twin-barreled 105s and another 10 of these single-barreled 150 millimeters. The 150s fire AP, the 105s fire HE, so you actually get a really good mix. And when you have, say, a destroyer coming at you, um, you know, the AP has a chance of penetrating and doing a lot more damage than just an all HE barrage, but you still have that HE to break modules and light fires. So next, her AA, fairly substantial for her tier compared to, say, the New Mexico. New Mexico's AA rating is 44, the Germans is 45. So when you consider that one of the, the hallmarks of the American battleship lines becomes that they do have very strong AA, especially when compared to the, the later um, Japanese, you know, the, the Germans are right there with them. And a lot of it's thanks to all these dual purpose 105s. They really do help with that rating. The ship is also pretty speedy, I'd say, for her tier. You know, the New Mexico does 21 knots. Bayern does 25. Compared to 24.5 in the Fuso and 23.5 in the Warspite, she is the fastest tier 6 battleship out there. Her turning circle eh, leaves a little to be desired. 630 meters. That's definitely not the, uh, the tight little circle of the Warspite, but when compared to the Fuso, eh, you can live with that. And she's got a relatively quick rudder shift of 13.9. I haven't put the module in to boost that, but it's definitely one of the directions you could go with this ship. And then finally, concealment. Not a big thing in battleships, but it is a 43, which, you know, puts her ahead of her contemporaries. The New Mexico's concealment is 39. The Fuso's is 18. They are spotted from a mile away. No surprise. Look at that massive superstructure and, well, pretty much the same as the Warspite. Which really shouldn't come into surprise considering they are very similarly sized and equipped. So now I'm going to drop my commander onto this and it should come as no surprise that the commander I use is the one that I have been saving and building in my turpets. Very skilled. I've given him basic fire training, expert marksmanship, superintendent, then I gave it advanced fire training, and because I don't have enough for a fifth skill, as I've mentioned before, I backfill with these ship survive abilities because, you know, 10% reload on the damage control can save you sometimes, and, you know, with the five repair parties that I have on this ship between the captain skill and the premium consumable, you want to be able to use all those. You don't want to die early and, you know, leave three of them on the table. But hopping back into port with the commander now equipped, I'm actually going to look at the secondary range. And you can see, as I've got it equipped, 7.6 kilometers. It's pushed the AA up to a 56 rating um, from the 45 it was. And overall, just really solid ship and I really love the secondaries and that get in there bare knuckle box you know brawl in close way these ships behave so moving on to modules I know I already touched on it and flipped to the screen but main armament one just because you really don't want to lose those um, batteries and I don't feel that secondaries helps enough and I'm willing to run the uh, the flags to reduce detonation chance. For the next one, secondary battery modification 2. Uh, you could also go with aiming mod 1 to boost your uh, accuracy, but for me, I really like the secondary range, and anyone who watches me by now should pretty much know that's kind of how I build my battleships. I've got damage control 1 equipped, and I haven't gone for a fourth skill. Uh, I would probably recommend steering gear mod 2 and you know what I'm actually going to equip it because really it's what you should be putting on this. You can see it brings that rudder shift down to 11.1 .1, which is going to make this a very responsive vessel. Uh, as for the upgrades you can see 
the hull is really the first one you want to go for. It gives you 7,700 hit points, a massive boost to your AA defense, and it helps your maneuverability and concealment. By comparison, the extra two knots you get out of the main engine, well, without it, you're basically just the same speed as all the other battleships at your tier, so you can live with that. And the firing range, yeah, it's important because 16.1 stock, but really 16.1, that's the same gun range you have in a you know, fully upgraded New Mexico, so and even a upgraded Colorado. Whereas with it, you know, 17.7, .7, more than respectable, which is why I don't feel the the need to boost my uh, fire range. Which actually, now that I look at it, you can't. Uh, must be a feature the Germans do not have at this tier. Something else the Germans don't have at this tier, um, rather unique, is they have no plane. Uh, so you have no spotting plane, you've got no fighter, just not an option. It's not till tier 7 that you finally get one. But enough talking and staring at this beautiful ship in harbor, it's time to get into some gameplay. And here we are with our gameplay. It looks like we got a game with some tier 7s, uh, Miyoko and Colorado on the enemy team, and honestly, in the Bayern, that doesn't really scare me. If you angle yourself properly, and they're not, your guns are going to outperform theirs, and even if they do angle properly, I find the secondaries really do chip in with a lot of fire damage and can help overtake them. So, domination mode on Estuary. I know I normally go over for A, but looking at where everyone spawned, me and my division mates decide we're going to go over for Delta, try to capture it. We had a good game earlier from the north end of the map going uh, to the eastern side, so now we're going to see if we can have a good game from the southern end of the map. So you can see I'm running my uh, premium rank camo on this vessel, just trying to get through her as quick as possible. I am not fully upgraded at this point. I do have the hull, which very critical as I went over um, for those secondaries. AA survivability gets everything, and I had the engines. I did not yet have the range mod during this game. Uh, generally, I use the premium camos that I do have to unlock the modules in a vessel, and once I've got all the modules unlocked, I just go back to using normal credit camo and do the final grind the long way. And you can see, as always, a bit of a bug in the replay thing when I'm not moving my guns about and the camera's fixed. You can see that, well, all the names start moving about a little bit. So we have a really good sized force coming over to Delta, so I'm going to push. I'm not going to sit back and try to do what a lot of battleships normally do, and honestly, I don't feel it's what the Germans are best at with that, you know, poorer accuracy at long range, you're not going to get the same numbers of hits that you would in, say, a Japanese vessel, especially since the Japanese are essentially snipers. And with the way my captain's built for the secondaries, bringing those secondaries into the battle and really getting them shooting and putting damage on target is what I'm aiming to do. So, first victim is going to be a Miyoko. I aim, fire, and my aim was off, but luckily he ends up turning, and I get one penetration, one over penetration, and one ricochet for a thousand damage. Yeah, a little underwhelming, but honestly I didn't aim that well. Had he not turned, I would have not gotten a single shell in. But looking at everything, that Miyoko, he really is under 
enough gunfire. And I'm just going to manually control this for a bit since those icons are going all over the place. So the Miyoko is going to get finished off. You can see my buddy Savea and his Agnavoy shooting him. And I line up on this Cleveland just over 10 kilometers away. I fire. They're looking good, looking good. I hit. Not bad. Just shy of 6,000 damage with only one pen and two over penetrations. And that's really that aim biting in. You're going to get a lot of rounds going long and short, just missing a target that you felt you really, you know, did hit. But with the Cleveland run aground, not much chance of me missing there. But I still only get one Citadel and two Overpens, enough to do some solid damage to him, and friendly finishes him off. So my team holds three of the caps. You can see the majority of the enemy team went to A, and then they never pushed into it. And you see this far too much in, in gameplay is no one wants to be the guy to, you know, be the first one to push, so no one does. And I get the torpedo warning, look over my shoulder, they're not going to hit me, so I just keep on driving. Find a uh, enemy Koenig, the tier 5 German battleship, which honestly did not enjoy one bit and then get a surprise Mitsuki coming around the corner at just over three kilometers maybe I should have been a little more aware of their presence but you can see it looks like he's popping smoke yeah he definitely is but he's continuing to race through it and secondaries are lighting him up lit him on fire and Goomba and Savea were absolutely ripping into him for me because, you know, they had rounds ready and you never want to let friendly battleship get torped at close range. So I put another volley onto that Koenig and then we see a Koenigsberg who looks to be AFK. Not really having a good shot at the Koenig. I'm going to take the time to just bring my guns forward. I'm going to fire one volley right at midships, just aim straight for his smokestacks. So I put those in, and that's all I'm going to shoot. You know, it's generally a bad idea to waste too much time shooting at AFK ships. Yes, they could randomly show up, and if you don't have a good shot at anything, by all means, but if you've got targets to shoot at, you should be shooting at them, and that's why I kind of turn away, and he gets finished off before I would have had another volley anyways. So it's about here that I'm kind of making my decisions. You can see that big group of enemy battleships has pushed into A. They've, you know, our Minikaze may be able to throw some torps and get lucky, but really A is theirs. So we've got to get into B. So I turn in. My plan is going to go into B, go right up the middle, and try to intercept these battleships to stop them from getting to C. Because while we have a good lead right now, that could rapidly vanish if there is a lot of friendlies getting sunk and it, it could happen. And you can see on display here the Bayern's relatively good top speed. You know, it's not blazing fast, still faster than a Colorado. And one of the jokes that uh, a friend pointed out the other day when we were talking about the Olympics, Usain Bolt can run faster during the 100 meters than the Colorado's top speed. So there's some uh, thinking for all of you out there. There's a human being that is faster than one of the battleships in this game.
So you can see we've pushed into B. That Koenig hasn't really offered any kind of resistance, which, you know, on one hand, I think a bit of a misplay because he had he pushed in, he could easily have finished off this Koenigsberg and probably put some shots into me or the Pensacola. Instead, he kind of just kept driving away, letting our guys just shoot time and time again at him and light fires and, you know, do damage. You can see he is burning in more than one place as I aim in to shoot at him. And it, it's one of those things in battleships. If, if you can't get away and get out of that cruiser gunfire range, you're almost better to just go nose in, try to close them, get in there and bully them. You, you've got bigger guns and if you can get to close range, you know, you're more than accurate enough to hit citadels and you know one of my ongoing jokes is oh look a Nuremberg from the front here comes citadels because lower tier cruisers like these at tier six you can just shoot bow on and get citadels because their armor is not that good and you can still get them at higher tiers at range but I find that a little trollier So right here I see a big group pushing back around to engage and I'm going to try to be a little subversive and come up and shoot them in the behinds. And the first that I'm going to see is that Colorado and I know he's going to know I'm coming and I definitely make a misplay here. I'm spotted by that Bayern and uh, Nuremberg to the south. They're not engaging me because they're shooting at uh, our Aoba but as you can see I'm detected and I keep my bow pointed at that Bayern and try to come out all batteries on and I eat big hit from the Koenig, burn a repair and there's the Colorado's gun. Luckily the Colorado, he appeared to aim for my main armor belt which is fairly thick and a little trolly. I find where you want to aim on the German battleships and I'll, you know, it's, I pointed it out in harbor, is kind of that upper belt as opposed to the main one, unless something's perfectly broadside on. And as I said at the start of the game, you know, I'm not too terrified of these tier 7 BBs. I am able at close range to effectively ar angle my armor and really duke it out. You can see the secondary is opening up, I get a first fire. And he manages to just duck. I'm not comfortable with that shot. So I look over at the Koenig in case I can finish him. Doesn't look like it, so I wait. And I'm going to try to put this right almost from a stern. Aimed at his upper turret and lower super structure, That kind of secondary belt I described. Because you will reliably get penetrations into that area. So you can see where I shot. Rounds go in incapacitate a gun and do almost 8,000 damage. So yeah, it's not a citadel, but 8,000 damage of volley, you're going to quickly erase a high tier battleship. But this game's going to end before I get to fire off any more rounds. So that was a pretty typical game for me in the Byron. 225,000 credits, 6,668 experience, and about 85,000 damage. If you can keep yourself at about that 20 to 30 degrees angle, your belt armor just does its job and keeps shells out, and you can deal the damage. Um, and when you're firing at other German battleships, you really want to er aim for that kind of second armor belt or the very base of their superstructure, and you're going to get reliable penetrations. They may not be citadels, but you're still going to get like 10,000 damage of volley because a penetration does approximately 30% of your shell's maximum damage. The other thing you'll notice is look at all those secondary hits. 45, they let three fires. At tier 6, this thing has some pretty amazing secondaries and pretty decent AA. Top of the team, 1500 experience or thereabout. And you can see the kind of damage I put in, like tier 7 Colorado. I managed to put in 33,000 damage to him. That's more than he put back into me and he's a tier higher. Uh, you can see I used all AP. Only 38 shells penetrated, secondaries did about 7,000, and then another 8,000 from the fires I lit. And overall, once this loads, you can see I walked away with 137,000 credits and 
six six thousand six hundred sixty eight experience seven thousand seven hundred and seventy nine for the commander because I had a Zulu hotel flying and this is the commander out of my turbots when the German line came here when I got to the Bayern I moved him over up until the Bayern I didn't feel it was worth trying to transfer the captain in and retrain him but now that I'm here the ship's gonna take a little longer to get through and I don't mind that I'm having a lot of fun in it and it's been a reliable ride I hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up it really helps out if you didn't like it give me a thumbs down so that I can learn that you know maybe something in this people just didn't enjoy if you're not subscribed please hit that subscribe button and it'll just motivate me to make more content for you guys as always I'm Quicksilver Slash and I'll have another video for you tomorrow <laughs>